by far one of the coolest locations I have ever seen a roller coaster in is Thunder Dolphin, which is literally in the heart of downtown Tokyo, surrounded by buildings on all sides, smack in the middle of the city, and it is awesome. The roller coaster is a little strange, parts that are great, parts that are not so great, and I'm going to be talking about all of that in today's review. So first up, you can find this park at Tokyo Dome City. The place is mainly known for Thunder Dolphin, but they also have several other attractions, and the roller coaster wraps around a good chunk of the park. It essentially makes this triangle shape. It was built by Intamin, same company that's made rides like Millennium Force and Terminator 305, Skyrush, these fantastic roller coasters, and this is a pretty large ride. Look at that height, 263 feet tall. Now what's so interesting about this is that because it has these huge buildings on all sides, your sense of scale is off when you view this thing. Upon first looking at it, I thought it was about maybe 180 feet tall. It didn't look that big just because the buildings around it are so much taller. I was shocked when I found out that this was getting close to giga height. Like, look at the height difference between this and Orion. It's not that much at all. Max speed of this thing, 81 miles per hour. That's, of course, reached at the bottom of the first drop. So you build up some pretty good speed here. And what's weird is that with this ride, the speed comes and it goes. There'll be moments where it will climb up on top of buildings. You won't be going super fast. And then as soon as you drop off the building, you build all that speed back up. So one of the things I'll say about this ride is that pacing is not one of its strong suits. And a lot of that has to do with the layout. The entire far side of the ride is located on top of this one building. And so when it's up there, it's not climbing super high up or doing anything crazy. It stays pretty low, especially when it goes up there for the second round. So I would say this is probably one of the most unique layouts I've seen for roller coaster of this style. And I don't say that as a good thing because I'd probably put this lower than most of those other rides that I'm thinking about comparing it to. But if there is one thing this ride does better than all of those, it is location. Unbelievable. But let's get into this specific layout. So you board your vehicle, you have an Intamin T-bar and a seat belt. When you dispatch out of the station, you go up a cable lift hill. So it pulls you up there quietly and pretty fast. And when you get up there, the view is spectacular. Really can't emphasize that enough. Location, location, location. It is amazing how big of an impact that can have. And when you crest over this drop, if you're sitting in the back, you're going to get whipped over. Great airtime. I recommend the back only for the first drop. Other than that, I'd say this is a front row ride. The front row, you're you're going to feel the speed more. And I think it just takes the rest of the elements in a better manner than the back does. I got four rides in on it, once in the back, once in the front, and the other somewhere in the middle. And yeah, I'd say front row is where it's at. But I really enjoyed the first drop. I actually grayed out at the bottom. So I'd say that's the most intense part of the ride. And the first thing you do is climb up on top of the building. You go through this turn and into an airtime hill, low to the ground. And by ground, I mean roof. And something I thought was kind of disappointing is that you don't get any airtime on that first hill on top of the building. I really wish you did. You get some airtime in other places during the ride, but that is not one of them. So that was one of the moments that disappointed me. But luckily, the next element is pretty sweet and makes up for it. I love this part. This dive through a hole in the building. This is arguably the most famous part of the ride. Everyone knows this one photo op where you can see the coaster just threading through this building. It is so cool. And that's whether you're on the ride or off the ride. I think that might be my favorite part of Thunder Dolphin. Really sweet. And next is another great moment. It is this hammerhead turn through this big old observation wheel that is hubless so you can go right in the center. It's, it's really great. And what I'd say the best part of that is actually when you start heading back down towards the ground. You start building that speed back up and you shoot into this small ejector hill under the main lift hill. And that's great airtime, really excellent. You pop up onto the building the second time and that's fun. But after this, the ride pretty much sucks because now we lose all all of our speed and go into these random twisties back and forth and it does nothing. It is slow. In fact, it is so slow that if you are sitting on the right side of the train and reach your hand out, you can touch the track from the first run around and not hurt yourself. You might think, oh my gosh, I can touch track? 
First of all, that sounds dangerous, but here's the thing. You're moving so slow, it doesn't even matter. It won't even hurt you when you touch it because you're moving at that slow of a speed. So yeah, kind of interesting that they didn't test their clearances there. I mean, if you don't have long arms, you probably won't be able to touch it. But if you're a pretty tall person, yeah, you can easily reach out and hit it. So from after there, we dive off the building once again. This is a pretty good moment. You slam into the brakes there at the bottom and you really slam in. You come to a stop and you're lurching forward and you're trying to process the ride that just happened. And I think the end consensus is that the first half really is great. Even the beginning of that second pass around, mainly that one hill under the lift hill. This is one of those rides where I almost wish that it ended after that ejector hill, because then you'd be ending on a good note. But because the ride goes all the way back around and features these really underwhelming moments, you kind of get off the ride and you're like, eh? It was okay because you're only thinking about the end of the ride instead of the beginning of the ride. The coaster has some really good moments, but there's enough parts of the ride that just leave you going, okay, this is stupid, that leaves a weird taste in your mouth. And this might be one of those coasters that kind of grows on you the more you ride it. I think the later rides I got on Thunder Dolphin, I enjoyed more than like the first one. And especially some of the guys in our group who got seven or eight rides on it. By the end, they were loving it. So if you go here, I would say ride it more than once. Try some different seats. It'll be interesting to see how your opinion evolves. But I think in conclusion, this was a big bucket list coaster for me. The location is just so cool. It's one of those rides that you always see the photos of. It's one that you're like, wow, I want to do that one day. It just looks so cool. And I'm really glad I wrote it. But for its final score, I'm going to give it a 6 out of 10. Just over the halfway mark, and that's because just over half the ride is good. That last 40% of the ride is not good, which is why I took off 4 points. By no means is the ride uncomfortable or bad, but the layout is just such a weird creation that leaves you with mixed feelings. But I want to hear from you guys. If you've written Thunder Dolphin, what you think of it. If you agree with my thoughts, and if you're new to the channel, make sure to check out the other coast reviews I've done. They're all available in a playlist organized in alphabetical order by the ride's name. So be sure to give some of those a watch. Hit that subscribe button, and I'll see you guys next time. Thank you for watching.